You know that feeling when you load the shot up on the computer, you think it's going to be great, but then you find that it's blurred. Well, that's me today. Never mind. There's a few other good ones as well, so keep watching. Today, we're at Loch Tom near Greenock. It's really windy today, so the sound quality might not be the best. Sorry about that. I've got a lapel mic on, but this is the first time I've actually used it outside. This location is just a few miles from where I live, so I'm quite lucky to have countryside like this, almost on my doorstep. Um, I've been here a few times, but certainly not for more than a year. Loch Tom is a man-made loch. It was built in the 1800s to provide a water supply to the town of Greenock. It's named after Robert Tom, who's the engineer that was responsible for building it. So here we are at the barn. It's looking a little bit more decrepit since the last time I came. Uh, the wind is blowing almost uh, straight towards us across the loch, so we've got some streaks on the surface of the water which might come out well in the long exposure that I've got planned and also there should be some good movement in the clouds in the sky too. For this first shot I'm going to use the wall and the track as a leading line down towards the barn and the loch and see what we get. This was the point where I realised I was having a problem with the camera I was using to film the videos which is this Sony A7S Mark II. Uh, not an actual problem with the camera, I think it's actually the memory card that was the problem. Uh, I just don't think it's fast enough to write the data at the speed that's required. So I had to abandon my um, filming um, on location and I'm gonna have to talk through the things that I did here in my studio at home. The photo was taken on the Canon 5D Mark III uh, with the 24 to 105 millimeter kit lens. Um, I was actually at 24 millimeters um, for this shot and f8 with an exposure time of two minutes. I did take an initial shot without the neutral density filters just so that I could get the exposure correct and make sure that the composition was what I was looking for. Uh, that was at a, an 80th of a second but uh, for the shot that I'm going to be editing uh, it's the long exposure version with a two minute exposure F8 ISO 50. This is the final version of the shot with, uh, as I said, the leading line from the wall and the track leading down towards the barn and the lock. You can see the streaks in the surface of the water that I mentioned that I was hoping to bring out before I took the picture and the movement in the clouds in the sky. 
So I'm going to um, put up the raw file now um, and you can see how this started out. Uh, as you can see, uh, exactly the same composition, same, it's the same shot, uh, but this is completely untouched. You can still see the streaks in the surface of the water there, but obviously the processing actually brings them out and enhances them. Unfortunately, I failed badly um, because I don't know how, but I didn't even manage to get it into focus. But for the purposes of demonstrating my processing workflow, I thought I'd go through it anyway. So I think it's a decent enough composition. I just didn't nail the focus on the day. We'll start in the develop module uh, of Lightroom and go through the adjustments that I made. Uh, they're not necessarily in this order. I do tend to go a bit backwards and forwards between the different panels on the right hand side. And one of the features of the latest version of Lightroom is that you can order these panels down the right hand side exactly how you want them. So I've got them in the flow that I normally use. I gradually just work down the panels, uh, but sometimes I do go a bit backwards and forwards. This time I've edited the image just in Lightroom, I haven't gone into Photoshop at all, so I'll show you what I did. I started off converting it from colour into black and white, which gives a pretty sort of flat image. And then added a bit of contrast to 36. Some clarity, went up to 43 on the clarity. Never normally use that sort of amount of clarity on the colour image, um, but for black and white it does work quite well. Dehaze up to 60. And one thing that I did as well was um, did a 16 by 9 crop, which I find quite a pleasing aspect ratio. Now I put the horizon up onto the top third of the uh, picture. Just like that. The, the barn is already sitting over towards the right hand third line. So I think that improves the balance of the image quite nicely. So that was the dehaze done. The luminosity, this is on the, um, the detail panel. A bit of noise reduction, so uh, luminance, not luminosity. Up to 29, there we go. Uh, which obviously softens the whole image as well. So I added in a little bit of sharpening, took it up from 40 up to 59. But then you don't want sharpening across the whole of the image. So using the Alt key and the mask, just masking out all of the areas where you don't want any sharpening, introducing noise. And that looks about right there, up to 94 on the masking. Then uh, down into the next panel, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. So that just takes out any distortion introduced by the lens. And then just a bit of a vignette around the edge in the post crop vignetting, uh, down to about minus 31 on the vignetting. There we go. And that is the finished image. Um, I think it looks okay. It's the effect that I set out to achieve when I was thinking of taking this photo. With it being such a windy day, I thought I'd take advantage of that and use it to my advantage with the surface of the water and the clouds. Had it have been in focus, I might have sort of gone back and got rid of maybe some of the little sort of distracting highlights in there. At the, the foreground just there where there's sort of bits of sheep wool or brightly coloured sticks um, that are just slightly distracting at the front. So that's the finished image. I don't normally work through as quickly as that. Um, obviously in this video I'm working backwards from the result that I'd already got. Uh, normally it's a bit more of a to and fro process as I'm trying different things to, to get an effect that I like. So let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously it's not a keeper but I still think it was worth going over how I actually got through from a raw file and process the image to the finished result. 
After taking that shot I moved around a bit more to the right and uh, set up another composition. This time, having thought that I'd already got a decent black and white image in the bag, I thought I'd uh, shoot something with colour in mind. Uh, so I set up um, in this place using a tumble down wall as a leading line towards the barn and the angle of the barn leading the eye further into the picture to the far side of the lock. Again, a long exposure uh, just to get a bit of movement in the sky and smooth out the surface of the water a bit. So I'm just going to go through quickly how I went from this raw file to that finished image. As you can see it's got a bit of a blue cast to it which is resulting from the Lee 10 stop uh, big stopper filter. So it's easy to correct that in Lightroom just into the develop module and change the white balance from as shot to auto and that takes it back to a more natural look. Um, you can fine tune that yourself if it's not quite what you wanted. Usually just go through and uh, reduce the highlights a bit, um, took the highlights down to minus 100 on this and then bring the shadows back up to 43 was what I went for on this one. There we go, 43. Um, plus 20 on the whites and minus 20 on the blacks. There we go, 21, that's near enough. Um, vibrance and saturation, both minus 20. Just to take a little bit of the colour out of it. There we go, minus 21 and 19, that's near enough too. Now for the noise reduction luminance, just up to 18, just to take out a little bit of noise. And then an increase in the sharpening to 61 and then just masking as well, again same as I did in the black and white to make sure that uh, none of the blank areas are picking up any extra noise from that sharpening. Remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections just to remove any imperfections from the lens. And uh, just a, a light vignette on this one of minus seven. So that's uh, pretty close to where I wanted the final result to be. Um, I do sometimes just have a look over at the left hand side in the creative options. Um, there's all sorts of different looks that uh, in presets that you can use in there. I actually quite like this one which was the red lift mat. Um, gives it a nice kind of bleak um, feeling and uh, I just went for a crop 16 by 9 So 16 by 9 crop um, just to balance the image out and you've got the leading line of the wall leading towards the barn which then leads you to look across the lock towards the other side. Nice little bit of interest in the right hand foreground of these little tufts of grass there. Uh, some distracting items, I, th I think that's a sheep's skull there or something like that. Um, a few little bits of some light tweaks and things, a bit of something there which I then went into Photoshop to remove and uh, then the, the finished item is this one here. Everything was going quite nicely. I was happily shooting away. I'd got a few more different exposure combinations to try, but then this happened. It looks like I might get beaten by the weather today. It's just started to rain. Uh, it's probably just a shower with the way the weather's so changeable um, today with the wind blowing through. Uh, but uh, now running up against the time constraints of having to be back home for the kids coming in from school as well. So uh, I've got one more shot in mind. I'm gonna try the lens baby with the uh, Composer Pro and the double glass optic, uh, which is about a 50 millimeter lens uh, from a little bit higher up, uh, looking down on the barn. So we'll see how that goes. So using the uh, lens baby, um, double glass optic in the Composer Pro attachment on the Sony A7R. I've changed the viewpoint looking down a bit more onto the barn this time and uh, the shot if you can see it in the viewfinder is focused on the barn and uh, the lens may be causing the edges of the frame to be thrown into a soft blur 
which draws your attention straight onto the barn. The original colour version didn't really do much for me so I decided to go for a black and white edit. I wanted something that was quite moody and menacing and so it's quite a low key image. There's no um, true white point in this one. Um, everything is on the dark side. Uh, you've got the end gable of the barn in uh, sharp focus and everything else is falling away into mysterious darkness. The doorway into the barn just leads into blackness. Um, I like the way you've got uh, a bit of highlight just leading in from the left hand side towards that doorway but you can't make out exactly what it is, it's all left to your imagination. That is my final image of the day from this location. As you can see you can get very strikingly different images on the same day, in the same place. If you look around and just compose slightly differently or maybe use a different lens or a technique like uh, long exposure. As I said I have been here before and so I'll just put up now a couple of images from my previous visits. Leave a comment and let me know which one you like the best or which one you hate the most or if you like none at all. If you'd like me to make a video about long exposure photography tips or maybe how I use lens babies, leave me a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, even though things didn't go to plan in making the video. It just goes to show that you shouldn't be afraid to fail, it's all part of the learning process. I'm still a beginner for this, hopefully I'm going to improve. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification icon if you want to hear when my next video comes out. You can see more of my photography on my website andyhallphoto.com and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram as Andy Hall Photography. I'm Andy, this is Camper Camera Go. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.